Dawson Rider Review. Hey YouTube, Dawson Rider here with a Dawson's Ramble video, my first one in quite a while, um, on a everything wrong with Dino Supercharged. By everything, I mean most everything I can remember in this, what will probably be some sort of rant, knowing me. Um, first off, I want to address, this has nothing to do with the content of this video, I give gotten quite a few requests, quite a lot actually, about my Dawson's Ramble series on Power Rangers Retrospective, and I actually really appreciate how much people like those videos, I didn't know people liked them that much. Um, that is still a plan, but right now, I, I paused my Power Rangers rewatch because I kind of got bored. I have these kicks I'm on. I'm currently in the middle of a Pokemon kick and a Star Wars kick, so it's like, once I'm like into a, a PR kick and I feel like rewatching it again, I'll get back into it. Uh, I could force myself, but I feel that my, my opinions are better and I'm more focused on doing the video and thinking about things critically when I'm actually into the content, whereas now I power through Time Force and then want to talk about, you don't know, uh, Diggersby or something, or Diggle, anything with Dig. Anyway, so that's that. So that is still happening. Uh, I appreciate the interest. But anyway, we are here to talk about Dino Charge with my friend Juo King, who is adorable, and if you don't like him, you can get the hell off of our land. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, so Dino Charge, that slash Dino Super Charge, this video is being recorded after the airing of the episode, which title I don't remember, but the one where the Cyan, or the Aqua Ranger, excuse me, and uh, Dino Super Charge mode debuted. Um, which kind of, like, inspired my general upsetness. Uh, and also, I was inspired to this video by a buddy of mine, Willie J. Co., who did a really good video also talking about things wrong with Dino Charge, and I pretty much agree with everything he said. I will link to that in the description. Um, but mine will be a little bit less organized. If you know me, I just kind of go off. I'll probably end up talking about, like, New Girl at some point, possibly Peace Fibs. We don't know. Who knows? I don't even know. But Dino Charge, okay, first off, I want to say, I don't want to come off as overly hateful. Because I, I love the franchise, and I do still like Dino Charge, and I, there's things I like about it, but between some of the inconsistencies in the show and the way the fandom treats it, I've gotten a bit annoyed over the last, I don't know, i say six months, maybe since, since Dino Charge came back for its second half. I think it's because Dino Charge did come back, and it did feel, or when it started, it did feel fresh. And it did bring things to the table that Samurai and Megaforce were missing, for sure. And it did things better. And I acknowledge that, too. I was pretty excited when it first came out. But as it went on, it, it did apparently also have some of its own problems and some of the same problems. But so what annoyed me, I think, what sparked me to notice it more, is that the fandom wasn't either noticing or caring or letting it slide, which I don't necessarily need an abundance of negativity, but I, the sort of prejudice of it bothered me. For example, all of Power Rangers since the beginning of time, they say corny lines when they fight. But when Samurai or Megaforce would do it, people would rip them to shreds, go right at their throats, but Dino Charge did it, and they're like, oh, it's so charming. I'm like, the lines are just as stupid in both shows. I honestly don't have a problem with it. It's kind of something that's always been there. I could do with quippier lines that are more fun, but it's just so funny that it's like, there's really no difference in the puns Sue Megaforce was making and the puns Dino Charge was making. If anything, I'm more annoyed at how often Coda reminds you he's a caveman in fighting dialogue. He reminds you just as often as Kendra reminds you she's a barista. Seriously, we know you're a barista. Go do some hot girl stuff. But anyway, um, so yeah, there's just stuff like that that the fandom would let slide because, oh, Judlin, he, he can do no wrong. It's so good. Dino Charge. And it's like, it, it's kind of the same. So, like, that was really bothering me. It's like, I kind of want this happy medium. I, I get annoyed if there's too much negativity, and I get annoyed if there's too much positivity. I need a medium. And as of late, a lot of the fandoms actually started to notice the problems with Dino Charge, which actually makes me happy. It feels weird to say that I'm happy that people are actually attacking it, because it got annoying to see them worshipping at its altar. And, it, uh, yeah, so... I think one of my main problems with Dino Charge, I'll start off by saying, is uh, continuity and explanations. Now... By the time Supercharge ends, a lot of my complaints, if not potentially all of them, could be addressed, which I would love. Um, there's a lot of uh, plot hole explanations, and maybe they are saving it. I would like there to feel like there's a good reason for why they held off on it. Um, I don't know if that would happen. Um, but right now, uh, even if we get an explanation, I feel like I'll still be on some level annoyed that there was never an explanation at the beginning. Like, for example, anything about the Energems. They're so vague and mysterious, like Willie Jaco said, he's, they just write everything off as being mysterious. All we know is they're a bunch of fickle bitches about like, oh man, you made fun of someone's music taste, your power shut off. But then Riley tries to cheat at something, which I really don't care, he did, um, and it's fine. Uh, it's like really dumb, like, Energem 
being judgmental? Like, I don't understand that. Uh, that's basically all we've gotten about it. Um, and we don't know really where they come from, we just know Keeper had them. Uh, how they work, I feel like there's this really vague line between what the Energem creates um, and what Kendall does. Um, and my biggest thing is where the Zords come from. I mean, there's a lot of series and a lot of PR where certain things like that are glossed over. And on some level, the fandom accepts that, and me too, sometimes. But in Dino Charge in particular, it bothers me because any time between now and the pilot, they could have had a line that said three seconds to say, like, the Zords come from the dinosaurs they were bonded with. Like, did the spirits of the Zords become the Zords? Are the dinosaurs that actually got infused with them the Zords, like in Kiryuger? Uh, did, uh, you know, a master tinker from Elf make it? I don't know. Like, you could fix it so easily. And I get a feeling that's one of the things that really won't get explained. We could get origins more on the Energems, but I feel like the Zords aren't explained. And then you have dumb made-up rules like, oh, the Plesiozord's sick because they get sick sometimes, but Ankle Zord's fine. I said Ankle Zord on purpose, it's a bit. So, it's just all very vague and messy, and it can be so easily fixed, and I feel like not enough people bring up how messy all of it is, and I want to know more about where Keeper came from, and uh, all that, we could totally get some of that later, and uh, even more locally, not so much the larger Energem stuff, but why haven't we gotten more about how Kendall got together with Keeper? We did recently get a bit when they found Coda, but I would like an episode just dedicated to how Kendall uh, met Keeper and why she decided to help him, and then maybe how she decided to track down Chase. That would have been a cool episode. Uh, it's all very vague, and I feel we know very little about people we spent most time with. And it's not like Samurai, where uh, it started weird because of a network decision to chop the pilot off and put it later. Uh, they filmed it properly, they just didn't get to show it properly. So it's not like there's a, a hidden, like, super pilot where we got everything known. And it's just things like that that bother me. I feel like there's a lack of answers to simpler questions. And in reference to that whole, sometimes there's vagueness in PR, like the whole how did they know how to, you know, do their weapons or whatever. Um, like I said, there's certain things I can write off, but also just the excuse of that's the way it's always been done, or, oh, this series was vague about it. That's not a good excuse to keep doing it. Um, like, in this episode, how the hell did sign? Ah, uh, sorry. I'm not trying to be a purist, it's just a habit. Aqua, get a super drive, or a dino drive charger. I could maybe headcanon a way that Tyler gave him the super drive from the sword, but how did he get it? He didn't... It makes no sense. It's just little things like that that build up, and I feel like there's a lot of them, and it wasn't until recently that people were bringing them up. Um, and so, um, this is going to be all over the place. So since I'm talking about Aqua, let's talk about that. I appreciate the fact that they wanted to do things differently. Aqua was the first uh, other ranger to appear. I think he appeared before Gold and Cure User. So I appreciate that they decided to wait. Uh, they did his Zord, which he doesn't appear that often early, but I like that they changed that up and that they subverted expectations with not having Tyler's dad be Silver, and instead it was Cyan. Aqua, I'm sorry. Um, and I, I like that they did that, the whole him not aging is kind of cool. There's some cool ideas behind it, but it was so poorly done. We waited so long for Aqua, and he just sort of very quickly appears and then very quickly gets overshadowed by the Superdrive mode, which is an entire other rant, uh, or the Supercharge mode, excuse me, uh, altogether. Um, and it, it's disappointing uh, how it was done in regards to the Aqua Ranger himself getting such a quick debut. But also, um, I'm kind of fatigued at missing parent stories in general, um, and especially in Toku. There's too much important put on parentage and missing parents. It's really boring now. So I'm not a fan of Tyler's dad's story, and it doesn't help that he's whining like a crying baby every episode. Oh, Dad, we used to play kid! And it's just like, shut up, man! Get it together! Uh, Troy was boring, but at least he didn't whine this much. And so, but regardless of my feelings on the story, it's been a big part of Dino Charge. And the fact that he's been looking for him for a season and like a fourth, less than a fourth, and then all of a sudden it's just, hey, I'm here. And Tyler it really had nothing to do with finding him, um, is dumb. And then also, he's been a ranger for ten years, and as of this moment, we're giving no reason why he didn't contact his son. And I just want to say that within the next episode, this part, what I'm saying, could be fixed. But what bothers me is how it was handled at the end, where he's just like, oh yeah, I've been a ranger for ten years. And they're like, lol, Rusty knew, and he, ta he talked to Tyler and just laughed at him as he walked away not knowing where his dad was. And even if they fix that next episode, the way it was handled bothered me, because it was just like, oh, I don't care that you've been a ranger for ten years and were somehow a complete dumbass and didn't know the other rangers existed, especially the Dino Charge rangers. So let's just play catch. So regardless of how that's fixed, 
that was dumbly handled. Dumbly is a very professional word. It's just, I try not to put too much importance on how other seasons interact with each other because even though they are all interconnected, um, I really, this is a whole video I could do uh, all together, which I might, maybe some days. I really wish PR cared about its continuity, because it could be so cool. And then PR through In Space weren't perfect, but the fact that they all were interconnected was neat, and if we actually cared that much still, it would be so cool. That's an entirely different rant. But my point about this is that um, I try not to put too much on, like, oh, why was it in the Legendary Battle? Because Dino Charge wasn't written yet. It's just, you can't fix stuff like that. Or, like, oh, what about SPD? It's like all these different things. You can't, you know, complain about something that hadn't been written yet. But in terms of him not knowing that there were other Dino Charge Rangers, what the hell was he doing? Like, for real. With Purple, uh, I still thought it was dumb he didn't know what other Power Rangers were, but I can write it off more because he was in a different country, and uh, he also was, a, like, a recluse. And apparently Tyler's dad is, too. He was just hiding from his psychopath son. But, what the hell? Like, he's been... Ten years is a long time. There's a lot of things with time. Like, seriously, they've been on Earth for millions of years. Why aren't all the aliens dead yet? They must have incredible lifespans. Why isn't Keeper dead yet? He probably is a ghost. But anyway, everything about that was ill-handled. Elsewhere, ill-handled in this episode, supercharge mode. And I want to talk about the super thing in general. Personally... I'm not a fan of the season split naming thing. I, I would I would love to go back to singular 32, 40 episode seasons in general, but I'm okay with the season split. I don't think we need to call it something different. I get it for marketing purposes, but it's kind of dumb. With Megaforce, however you feel about how that was handled, it did make more sense to have the different name change because it felt like two different seasons. But with Samurai and Dino Charge, I think we totally could have gone with just, this is season two, you don't need an extra title. If anything, maybe just add a title after it that doesn't impact the team name, like Ben 10 would do or Pokemon does with Arcs. I don't know. But I just want to talk about that in that regardless of how I feel about that structure, I have to say, personally, I think Samurai and Megaforce handled the transition better. Um, Samurai introduced the black box in Season 1, and it was carryover to the Super Samurai mode. Now, they used Shinkindra's plot a lot, I know, whatever complaints about that, but regardless, I thought that was handled well for foreshadowing and transitioning and making me feel like, okay, this is why it's called Super Samurai, and also they didn't really call themselves that. Megaforce, again, regardless of how you think it was handled, the way the powers were and the fact that they needed these new powers to fight the Armada, there's obviously problems with Megaforce, I'm not here to talk about that, but the way it was handled was well done, I thought. It could have been better, but the transition I thought was good, it felt like, okay, this is why we're having Super Megaforce, this is why it's Season 2. Dino Charge didn't feel like that. They basically gave up their search at the end of the season. They're like, oh, Sledge is probably dead, it's fine, we don't need to look for his ship, you know, oh, we defeated one enemy, let's quit, we don't need to, you know, protect anybody else. So they basically just left, and then season two was like, oh, hey, we should probably do our jobs, because this other guy's here. Um, and there's, there was no real reason for me to feel, oh, this is why they're supercharged. And yet they started calling themselves that. Yes, they have the super drive mode, but it was just a, hey, here's this, there was no real explanation behind it. And the namesake of the season is the supercharged mode Tyler got, which is also, this is how they get it. Here. I don't know why I'm using this as a prop, but that's the explanation for Dino Charge. People complain about Megaforce's explanation, which is also just as vague. But Megaforce at least was like, it was basically just inferred Mega, or Mega, uh, Gosei was making these things and just giving them to him, which is true for, for uh, Kendall too, but it's like, sometimes there was at least a bit more of a story behind it. And uh, Kendall, it just seems like, oh, here. I feel like at the beginning of Supercharge, it should have been like, Heko was such a challenge that uh, maybe Kendall was like, well, this is kind of hard, I'm going to work on something. And then all of a sudden this episode, she's like, okay, now I have this thing. Instead of, oh, here, here, all of a sudden here it is. And it's just, it doesn't feel like a good transition. Uh, this is why they're called Supercharge, especially when they didn't introduce Supercharge right away um, and then started calling themselves Supercharge. I thought that was awkwardly handled, and I don't think that's talked about nearly enough. Just very dumb, um, and yeah, I just, I don't like that. I think it could have been much better handled. At this moment, with the exception of, uh, I guess the debut in this episode, it's felt like filler. It's like Dino Filler Charge for the second season, and it's kind of lackluster. Um, two other things I want to touch on quick before this goes on too long is the Dino Drive and the Super Drive modes. Now this is the second time we've gotten modes that are Megazord exclusive, which first time was Samurai. So for both series, I think it would have been cool to have them out of, uh, out of the cockpit. Um, especially with Super Drive, like, it's such a cool mode, and it's really crappy to have to have him just be in the Megazord. Especially since, 
they have to film their own footage anyway in the Megazord. So even if it was like minimal or like more minimal amounts of fight footage, why can't we film them outside fighting? Does it cost more? I don't know. Uh, it's just such a waste of a mode. And we could see it outside, but for right now, it's just a waste. And also, it feels like there's very much a lack of reason for it. I feel like it would have been better off with Dino Drive being introduced at the beginning of the series as, hey, this is how you control the Megazord. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a thing. Um, and it also reminded me of uh, something else, which I just forgot. So I just remembered it and forgot it at the same time. Um, but I will maybe circle back to that with the uh, the super drive mode. But the last thing I really mainly wanted to address was Heckle, who I think is a really interesting villain, uh, really charismatic. I actually like him quite a lot, um, and I think that they really squandered the opportunity of him working with the Rangers. I don't know how long I would have wanted it to go on, but I think it should have gone on longer. I think the dynamic was very interesting, and the fact that he was outed so early and in a filler episode was dumb because if it would have went on a little bit longer and maybe had them become a little more buddy-buddy, it could have made for a pretty shocking reveal for the Rangers. And instead, it was in a filler episode, glossed over, and they haven't even mentioned it since. Granted, the episode aired right after it was supposed to air before it, but still, because of that, even in this episode, which was kind of full uh, of stuff, uh, they haven't addressed it yet, which is awkward. There's so much about, like the payoff and addressing things that's awkward about Dino Charge. Um, and I think that there was a huge wasted opportunity there with Heckle. Uh, really made him look like an idiot. Um, yeah, I think that could have been way cooler and it was just very quickly thrown away and I, I don't agree with how that was handled. Um, I did remember the other thing real quick I wanted to talk about which was I was thinking about filming original footage. Now usually when a character like a ranger doesn't appear in certain situations you can say oh it's because of the Sentai footage. Which, in general, I think is kind of a dumb excuse, because can we just film our own TV show sometimes? Like, for real, everyone else does it. But uh, in terms of Kendall, at this moment, who just became a ranger and has seen very little, and that's because Yuyoi was more prominent than other rangers, but she still didn't always use her mecha and anything like that. But we film our own Zord footage. I don't see why we can't put Kendall in her own Zord more often. Uh, there's really no reason, since we're making up our own choreography in the suit, uh, we could have Keeper piloting the Zords all the time for, if we wanted, because there's nothing really stopping us. There's nothing in the Zords' body language that tells us who's in it. Uh, so I think that that could be a, an improvement there. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. Um, I don't feel like there's too much else I want to address. I didn't want to get too ranty. Um, but I just wanted to sort of address like my frustrations with it, and I think that a lot of these could be addressed later, like I said. But right now, it's just kind of frustrating... Well, actually, I guess not right now, because people are actually starting to address it more, which is nice, but it was just frustrating to see people gloss over these problems that Dino Charge has because Judd Lynn, or because Dino Charge, or whatever dumb reason, um, and basically worshipping... I think the best way I would describe Dino Charge is, or the fandom on it, a lot of the ways, is worshipping mediocrity. I don't think Dino Charge is terrible uh, by any means, like a god-awful, unwatchable, but I think, as right now, it's very middle-of-the-road, possibly below, and people are kind of worshipping it, or were worshipping it, because it was a little bit better than Samurai and Megaforce. And it's like, all of a sudden, getting a, like a, a spouse that doesn't beat you, and you're like, oh man, this is amazing, when you shouldn't have been beaten in the first place, um, even if it's mediocre. So yeah, I just wanted to talk about that, and I think there needs to be more explanations. I actually have more of a problem with the lack of certain explanations in this than so many people last year attacked the new powers. And honestly, I didn't need anything beyond these are alien rangers from... A different planet. It would have been cool. You know what would be cool? Random side note, if instead of doing an MMPR comic, we would do comics about rangers from other planets in the expanded universe. That would be awesome. But I really didn't, the series was about the, the rangers and the anniversary. I didn't need an in-depth backstory pamphlet on every new power. Should it have been handled better? Sure. They probably did, just so they could use the Sentai footage. But for me, it was a neat thing that added to the universe. And I didn't need anything past, hey, these are alien rangers. In fact, for me, this is rangers from a different planet. It was a better explanation than all the Energems are mysterious. Don't question them. So yeah, I think people need to question this more. I hope that these problems, at least some of the explanation problems, are addressed. Um, and I, I really would like to feel that there was a reason for it being held off. I honestly don't think every single one of my continuity complaints will have the feeling of, alright, this makes sense they held this off, but I hope some of them are. 
But anyway, that's about it. Sorry if this ramble was a bit... I guess that's why I call it ramble, but, you know, all over the place. But I just want to get some of my frustrations out of the way. Uh, leave in the comments. Let me know how you feel. Um, all that stuff. I really don't have too much more to say. Thanks for watching if you did. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All that stuff. Until next time. Uh, oh, wait. Don't forget to check out the RR podcast. We be crazy. All right. Now, until next time, Dawson Ryder, signing out.